What's up guys? This is the Braveman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of My Empire Dead War. Let's play as Great Britain. And in this episode we will be witnessing the end of the 13 colonies because Williamsburg is about to be attacked and we also have two full armies ready to march on Philadelphia. But let's not get carried away. First of all we have to secure Williamsburg. Um, pretty basic colonial army here. We've got a couple of units that are, that are a bit depleted but nothing that's going to too dramatically change the outcome of the battle. So let's attack the city of Williamsburg. And then once we've taken the uh, taken these 13 colonies regions, one of our armies may be sent out west and down towards Texas to secure the native regions to pretty much create a a a, 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 a fixed Americas, a British Americas, one that's free of all sorts of influences we'd rather not have. <clears throat> And then these armies will have the job of uh, invading in India, I think. Once we've built things up a bit and we've expanded our strength a bit more, let's put our strong units together to form the centre of our battle line. My weaker units are going to form my right flank, just so, because they're all generally the right size. Um, it will make deploying them a bit easier. Let's give them some pike and cavalry support. Drop some cavalry on our left flank. General in the center. So we have these guys selected ready. My artillery is set up. So I'm going to want to run my guys. I mean that is... I mean they're only auxiliary. But they have mortars. So we're going to want to move... Quickly, my artillery is going to try and engage them, but probably not too successfully. So my gun is instead of going to target Colonial Light Cavalry. We have a couple of units set up on this flank, but they're not going to be able to really um, stop our infantry push. It's got their auxiliaries up front, hoping to skirmish us a bit, but that's not going to work because the British regulars are on their way. The second regiment of foot. Second alongside the 94th. This is the first here. First regiment of horse. Um, do you think so? The first might well have been combined. Push up into their face. Aha, there's a another native musketman auxiliary unit. So let's keep pushing up. I mean these guys are not going to be opti optimally deployed. These guys are going to be deployed to try and catch these two units in some sort of crossfire. Obviously we've deployed in a... Ah, so we've tried this before. <laughs> it's mighty strange. Even though it's on, it seems like it somehow turns off. There we go, the auxiliaries have been... Defeated. So I really want to push my left flank because that's leaving them. I think the terrain is the most advantageous using my muskets there. Create a bit more of a homogenous line. So my artillery's picking away. Now they're light cavalry, but they are only demi cannons, so they're not super great. They are old technology. The rangers have been shot down. The colonial line, the, the 23rd regiment, will now be our next target. Being fired upon in the flank. Okay, let's run our cavalry up. Let's get our line to run.
Alright, you guys push up. You're going to be isolated a bit for a while. New men advance into the town. You guys... You guys hold... Eh, don't hold position. Push up a little bit more. You might actually try and advance up into the town on the flank. So these guys can engage. Begin engaging their mortar line. My cavalry. Let's get my cavalry involved. Because they're only colonial light cavalry. So a regiment of horse is more than enough to deal with them. Our yeomanry take a bit more of a diverted, not a diverted position, but prepare for other tasking. Yeah, the mortars are doing damage. They may cause the 90th to rout, although that could be artillery fire. There we go, this unit push up to the top of the slope same with you guys the 89th hold fire the left flank has been secured so now this unit can advance up to here oh, there you're having a great time against that cavalry unit throw a line infantry unit into this combat here let's get another infantry unit onto the line my cavalry here i want to keep spooking this block of troops so they don't feel like they can actually defend that position now you've taken the hammering 90th regiment i know you have that should get better when we've pushed up the right flank obviously our <laughs> cavalry's done nothing neither have our pikes so depending on the route they take that cavalry should be fine because only some spikes here and there's a set further up so that's my pikeman that's going to try and cross them over okay so the general charged us New men push up and charge the Colonial Light, so my yeomanry are engaging this unit of Colonial Light. Colonial Light Cavalry. My grenadiers aren't going to get that many shots off. Let's push you guys up in front of the house. Let's get my grenadiers inside the warehouse. I mean, fundamentally, we're not going to do... Oh, cavalry, go this way. So this regiment of horse charged the enemy cavalry there. You guys stay back in reserve. It's got the 53rd regiment here. Got a couple of infantry units that are not going to be um, in great shape. So I might angle you more like that. You guys can advance to the this opening, but not the direction I want. Let's advance you in front over this cavalry battle up to... Okay, you guys. Just come in and bring, bring down death and destruction to the entire enemy force. I believe that is everyone. Oh, lucky that they didn't get up to much there. would like to get my general involved, but I suspect he will not be able to easily have any involvement. So my cavalry don't need to do this, but they're, they're just doing it to get up some experience. And because there's so many troops so clustered together, 
Like, we don't actually need to kill the units, because obviously this is a city battle. We might be able to get... Nah, my general's not going to get any kills here. Nope. So now it's all down to... Okay, stop my artillery from firing as well. You guys have spread out well. But once our cavalry gets over here... Actually, it's probably going to be the end of it now, actually. Because there's only a handful of guys and they're all here. There we go. Williamsburg secured the territory of Virginia. So I'm wondering if I can get any cool units here. I mean, the Hessian Grenadiers and the Rangers, we already know. So you men continue to replenish. Obviously got some more plantations. We've got an agent who doesn't really need to go there, so he's actually going to march up to the marshalling yards near Boston. That's where he's, his position is going to... That's where his new position is going to be. Elsewhere, we do want to buff a couple of road upgrades, but we also want to keep some money for Pennsylvania. So there is an army here that could cause problems, but if we take, take the city then doesn't really matter. So you you can't actually get there in one turn. But you can. So if we do a, if we try and aim for a... Okay, good. They do come in as reinforcements, though. Which we need, because we don't have howitzers. We can't rely on the usual tactics. We have to be a bit more... This will be a bit more bloody. But let's try it. Let's try a bit more of a conventional city attack. Because we've got some... I don't know, actually. Our, our mercenary troops aren't the best. Hmm. Okay, let's take... Okay, you don't have any howitzers. You've got one unit of howitzers we can nick. So if I take one unit of militia back to Annapolis and you guys have one unit of howitzers... That's that's some fire support at least. So let's do this. So yeah, one of these armies, they got so I've got four armies. One of them will go clear out the Pueblo Nations, then they'll go out and take out the Black Hills, and then they'll go up to the Inuit and also subdue them. The rest will rebase and refit on the east coast, and I will gradually build up my strength because right now the the Marathas currently don't have anyone to focus on and they have global dominance in India. So our mercenaries are gonna have to go in the front door. As are my Queen's Rangers who look pretty good with their white feathers so this is an existing empire unit this is um in one of the dlcs we've got a good amount of cavalry which i'm going to spread out on either flank oh okay i accidentally picked them all up that's why i couldn't drag them so then our line infantry regiments are going to be deployed to try and hit the flanks along with the 4th foot, fourth Regiment of Foot Northumberland Fusiliers. Okay, good. General in the centre. You attack. Attack the middle, actually. Let's knock out some of this cavalry. Artillery inbound. Because we're already going to do some good damage in the center anyway. Well, we're going to do some, we're going to knock out, do some good damage to these units. So they've got some hidden auxiliary units, which might actually be here. Yeah, they are. Because looking around, I'm like, that's not a full army. 
But no, they're in the centre, which gives us even more reason to bombard the centre with quicklime because obviously native troops are pretty sturdy in melee and we're not going to want them... Um, we're not going to want them resisting our offensive. So we're going to be doing much more damage than we think based on the targets in the centre alone. But we need to keep our guns firing because we're at the very least going to want a way in. Because <laughs> um, we do have normally... Well, the limit, the issue of having such a small amount of artillery is a few lucky shots from the walls start to pick away at your artillery strength and before you know it you're they're actually destroying you your guns faster than your guns can destroy the wall that's the problem you start to run into there so we're going to want to make two breaches with the quick climb going in i mean look so the dead native warrior auxiliary clearly outnumber any cavalry we're actually killing there we go. So then my field artillery focus on making another breach. Let's see, I wonder if those, their cavalry is actually going to start charging. I, mean, I don't know at what point we stop firing there and we instead attack. Well, that's a pretty tasty block of infantry right there. But yeah, I'm going to want to make... Yeah, what do I? Two breaches is the safe option. Is the safer option. But actually, from a quick line perspective, having them focus on one is pretty good. Let's attack ground with a shrapnel shot and do some damage to the 4th Regiment. We've got... They can't stop us from all directions, so... I mean, you don't have any mortars. They're all... Demi cannons. Yeah. So I can march my hidden units out on either flank to give them cause for concern. Let's get shrapnel shot doing some damage here. Just make them attack the unit. Looks like attacking ground is going to cause more issues than solve them. Yeah, we're blasting some real holes into the 4th Regiment. Let's get my infantry that's advancing in the centre to actually have a bit of momentum to get far enough away from the artillery that the shells should go over their heads. I don't get too close because the 7th will then take up firing positions on the wall. Okay, let's actually switch you guys to round shot. Continue to attack this section of the wall just enough to damage the guns. Okay, attack the 26th, because that unit there, the 21st, has been knocked down. I mean, look at the, these men bravely stood shoulder to shoulder, ready for a great big old AoE death blob. Because our wing advancing on the right is going to be more than enough to upset them. Yeah, let's keep an eye on this, because occasionally they seem to change their mind about what they are and aren't going to shoot. Getting ready to do damage to this regiment of foot. Ooh, charging, eh? How it's a drop quick climb in front of the. Oh, you guys are going after Queen's Rangers. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. So, quick climb the breach, because that's where they're all about to just run out from. You guys can charge up. You guys charge up. 
recovery doesn't need to run because they're already pretty mobile as it is. Oh, they killed my general. There he is. Blet taken off of his horse by a cannonball. I mean, he is a bit close. Well, it doesn't matter. There's no point moving him out now. So. Northumberland Fusiliers. They do more damage and they've got more defence. So it's going to be the Northumberland Fusiliers who take position by the gate. The other two units, Storm. You guys, yeah, I did originally get you to attack elsewhere, but I think I might actually be tempted by... Well, you guys have to run up there. You guys are going to hold ground. You guys are going to get up there. Cavalry's on the move. Come on, fire one more volley. Knock, and now, that, I think, getting over 50% is what damages their guns. Rangers can try and deploy stakes, although I might well I probably have left it too late. Let's bring my cavalry and dragoons up. You men form square. They've shot a bunch of their own men. Okay, so no, the guns don't look like they're that badly impacted. But we are now up. Quick climb, land on the center. So you've taken one gatehouse. Let's just let my guys get up there first. Don't worry about marching through it. Just hold on to it. So the Mount Tribal Auxiliary are... They're upset about this. Okay, you guys fire it well on. There we go. So slowly picking them apart. Cavalry's charging out, they're going to hit my line. If I can get you guys to charge up quickly enough and support your... support your men-at-arms, you should be okay. Let's let these men get up top first before we start storming because they'll mount position they'll take positions on the fire step here and fire down into the center which will do us a lot of good keep attacking although it looks like actually they have been deploying their native oil auxiliary units which are which are very very depleted already oh those are reinforcements coming in aren't they forgot about them Ah, they want to, they broke one of our units. Fair enough, Ski. Come on, you guys, take up more more positions. Okay, you guys actually might go over here to hold off the reinforcements as they filter in. We might have to start trying to push. Let's get Colonial Light, or the Queen's Rangers up on the wall. You men charge down the wall, because right now you're currently just a target. Attack ground nearby, you men. Attack the native warrior auxiliary. That infantry unit's likely to die. So you guys, or it will, deploy square. Run my cavalry through the square. 
you men attack that colonial line, you men attack that colonial line. You men push in as well. You guys get down off the wall. Get our cavalry inside. Looks like, yeah, that unit broke as we expected it to. That unit's broken as well, which is a... No, oh, they came back. You guys stay in square. If you stay in square, they can't get in. So they broke... Keep on charging. You men charge the guns in the centre. Same with you guys. Form square. Hold, stay, stay firing at will. So you're attacking the last two native. Okay, run past them now. Just ignore him. You guys... Form, form ranks against the square and hold on. Get our cavalry in around the back. I know we've not taken that gatehouse, so I might run these rangers over to take it. I mean, this mercenary unit's probably going to be very upset because of the square formation issues. You men cease fire. You guys attack that inf that regiment. You guys attack that guy. You guys attack that guy. You guys attack those guys. Got a handful of chaps to take out. Is that a general's bodyguard unit? Yes, it is. Okay, let's just run you guys in. So these guys... So here come their reinforcements, but it looks like... Well, my artillery can pivot to try and engage them. This general's coming in. Who's going to attack the 25th? Because they're right there. You guys... Hold the centre. My rangers... Okay, one of you, one of these cavalry units keep attacking the Queen's bodyguard, or the, the bodyguard. Uh, you guys, round shot of the 18th regiment coming in, although methinks they will not last, this, they will not make it to the to the, uh, the zone. Yeah, there you go. Just take him out. It's a handful of guys. Just take him out. You guys cease fire. Attack the 21st Regiment, because it's just one guy. I mean, he's a pretty elite guy, but he's just one guy. No, fire it well off. He's on the floor! Jump him with hatchets! No, oh, Hessian line, eh? So you charge them, just stop them from coming around and resetting us. Yeah, here comes the rest of that army, streaming in. Our, our counter battery fire has done some good. It's caused some upset. It's not really solved any problems. Our reinforcements are coming in. See this this unit, this general's bodyguard unit, just can't get close enough in to, ma to make a difference. And there goes Philadelphia for the British forces. There we go. So we lost our general, but we created a dynasty. So let's get some repairs going. We can pick a new general, Aldred Hall. 
we can replenish it as much as we can. And that is global hegemony. Hegemony. Hegemony, hegemony, one or the other. So let's take all these howitzers, march them up here. You men combine. Then we can really take stock and go, okay, so we've got four and a half armies. We'll only need one. So I think the Pueblo nations are... No, they are not giants in the diplomatic scene. So we can just much stand here and storm in. Then we'll take Yankton. Then we'll push up and take Agvitok. But again, this isn't something we're going to do with um, three armies. It's just going to be one that knocks them out one at a time. Because we still have some concerning developments in the Mediterranean. So these, guys, like these guys currently don't really have a role, but they will. They will soon. Obviously, you're royal. You're the commander of the royal sovereign, so here comes new ships. A stack of privateers. But where, but where to put you? I think it's over and over here, because they're all actual ships that are doing... But, you know, they're more warships. So that first batch of privateers sail off to West Africa the Straits of Madagascar are, are, are ripe for a bit of taking if you go sail over to the this spot here there's no one there either so you guys may as well secure both posts split your fleet in half until supports can arrive and obviously the East Indies are as yet unexplored you're waiting on your Irish volunteers to get over to you Oliver Charlton is also waiting for more troops, but we have no money. So ooh, we're about to get preserved foods at Oxford, which is, might be a bit of a waste of research. But there we go. Heroic death for Alexander Croucher again, struck by a cannonball at extreme range. Oh well. So let's hit end turn. So that's the 13 colonies dealt with. Denmark may be a tempting medium-sized goal because it's only Finland it's only a handful of territories and Stockholm is a valuable territory to hold I mean it's, yeah it's not going to be pretty when those those armies deploy but then again it shouldn't be they're a major power that's been uh, turtling for some time in the in the center of Europe, which has got a lot of very wealthy provinces, so they shouldn't be a pushover. It's tempting to declare on the Ottomans because they are. I see. This is the thing with the Danes. If we go with the Danes, we need to jump on that little fleet, which I don't think will be. Which shan't be particularly difficult. Obviously, the Barbary states also need to be taken out. But I think, okay, we've got preserved foods, so you are going on with rifled cannons? Yeah, fair enough. Percussion shells aren't super great. One more turn to a screw breach. And we've got all of our research for the philosophical texts, and all the industrial texts are... We've only got one left to research, so you may as well carry on. So in terms of fleets arriving, there we go. The East Edward Vernon. So let's explore these posts. Greece. Barbary States. Just auto that, because they're all a bunch of junk. We will take two into His Majesty's service. And you will be sent to secure these initial posts for, her ma for His Majesty. Or Her Majesty. His Majesty. Still William III. Oh, that's the Ottomans. Over here we've got no one. Excellent. So we've still, we've still got to keep an eye on what the, the Ottomans may or may not do against Gibraltar. There we go. Plenty of privateers out here now. So these fifths combine with them. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's three. That's the three is where it starts to drop off. More is good. Don't get me wrong, but it, it, like the effectiveness drops off. 
the cost effectiveness. Because what this gives us, if nothing else, is the option to go, you know, we've secured these with lower level ships, so now this little ragtag stack can actually sail over to East Africa and we can split these guys up. Good stuff. So that was the other fleet, the other stack of privateers. Loads of successful missions for all of our agents. That's blocked for Edward Vernon. Uh, we sorted him out. So let's go back to the Americas. So this territory, well, the territory of Philadelphia can now fully replenish. Let's build steam pumped iron mine. Let's upgrade metal roads across the eastern seaboard. In Albany, New York, you guys expand. Got a whole new world of research here. Yeah. No, wait, were you getting the cavalry? No. Your Majesty. Ready. Fight. Fight. Okay, yeah, you were going over Fight. here. Get these howitzers over here. So right now, obviously, you're oversubscribed with infantry. So what we're going to do, rather than rather than recruit more, we're just going to combine some of our most elite regiments together. The twenty seventh, now you're you're not. You know, now we're not going to disband the, your regiment yet. We're going to just merge. Okay, the difference in colonial line and line, I see. We're going to combine units together with an aim of, to be honest, I might actually combine and disband a yeomanry regiment here. Oh no, you're going, yeah, you're going down here, so here at, Anna at Annapolis... We are going to want a shipyard somewhere, so I'm going to hold a militia unit ready to garrison the shipyard. But the problem with Annapolis is we've got all these militia that we don't want. Ready for order. So you men combine. Expand the construction here at Boston. Balmouth can get better roads. Port Nashwax, okay. Let's upgrade the ports. Okay. To be honest, it looks like Metal Roads is going to be order of the day in the Americas. So let's keep making sure we're dropping those Metal Roads, because what's so good about them is that it's that bonus per per turn to town wealth because obviously it's nice to to get it early and then long term it's just the wealth accrued is just a bit crazy especially when obviously so many regions we've got are actually not at top tier because we've been focusing our investment efforts elsewhere okay let's not go over to Europe yet let's go down to the North coast of South America, because you can see actually these regions aren't firing on full cylinders. On all cylinders, not full cylinders. There we go. Then we can upgrade you to a government council, upgrade you to a sugar warehouse. Actually, first, let's not upgrade you to a sugar warehouse. Let's go back to Europe. Make sure the Irish volunteers are down. I've reached Kevin McDowell. Highland Grenadiers are on their way to Oliver Charlton. So in terms of recruitment, though, you might have some Irish troops. Three Irish troops, but you need howitzers and... Two howitzers and two regular infantry, I think, to not draw too many um, elite units into one army. Because obviously we don't... We don't want to run out of cool units. We've got plenty of elite units to go around, so we've not got to be afraid of using regular infantry. So Denmark, the enemy, this nation state of Denmark, allied with the Marathas and Russia. 
We're at war with the Marathas. We could be at war with the Russians. So, you're okay. Where's that Danish... That little Danish raiding force. You're right there. Within easy pinching distance. Send some of these fifth rates preemptively out to the East Indies. Okay, so you're recruiting f um, third rate. It's because we are maxing out recruiting large ships down in Spain. So let's take these third rates down to Cadiz. Let's upgrade the boarding house to a theatre because why not? Actually, no. Let's let's not for a minute. Let's not go mad. So your recruitment is fine for now. So if I take you guys out of tuners, give you guys some Cairo infantry guards, give them two more units of infantry and then a light infantry unit. Because again, we do have lots of troops. We have lots of troops. I think potentially taking Denmark might be quite valuable for us. So let's move... Our rake that's in Prague up to Copenhagen. Move our priest over and investigate Finland. You can't really do much. And obviously, we have a couple. We have two armies, two decent armies over here doing. Well, this is an army, but it's not really doing anything. So if we declare on Russia. We might be able to draw in Denmark, but Denmark might betray them. So let's hit end turn. Because if Denmark betrays them, then that just means we can gobble up a couple of Russian territories quite easily. And I hope you're not hearing the police sirens that I can hear. Fortunately, it looks like my microphone's not picking them up. But yeah, we can take... Take out Russia. We can... Try gobble up Denmark, all the while building up our army and the armies in the Americas to be a bit more fighty. We probably want to recruit another army in England to send over to India, because right now we can have lots of colonial armies marching over there, but we'd like to have some um, British troops. So Cambridge has researched Screw Breach, which means we've got some more... We've got some more um, skirmisher types to recruit. Kevin McDowell. You be ready to march. So let's recruit a field marshal of Europe to send over to India. Which might sound a bit um, <laughs> colonialist, but we are playing as Britain and that's kind of what we did. Heavy cavalry regiment of horse. 24 pounder howitzers, 24 pounder, well, 24 pounder horse artillery, 24 pounder howitzers. Up here in Scotland, let's preemptively recruit two grenadier guards, one Highland grenadiers, two Highlander warband. If we recruit all our Scottish line, yeah, we have. So let's recruit two green jackets. As you know, one green jacket, one sharpshooters, because I want to spread out the green jackets as much as I can. We can only get eight. And let's get one line infantry guards to kind of counterbalance the Royal Highland Grenadiers. And let's get two line infantry. Good. Good. So now you guys... You guys can combine. Sail back... To Europe for repairs. These fleets secure the trade zones because you want to sail back. Actually, what I, should, what I should get my guys to do is do this. They may as well sit here raiding enemy shipping while they're guarding our 
our own trade ships. Let's try and recruit some... So we can send one to... Ah, you're here. Okay, good, because you've got a spy. Let's send... Send a spy up to Denmark. Then we'll send him... We'll send this ship to the West Indies to join on to the... A West Africa, sorry, to join on to the uh, trade fleet that's only two privateers. Actually, no, don't infiltrate. If there's only a 50-50 shot, just stand nearby. So these ships sail over to the East Indies. In terms of construction... There we go. Our front line is is ready for a war. Well, generally ready. We're probably going to have to go to Brown Alert once we... Oh, there we go. So we've got Ferguson Rifleman, 170 range, with 70 accuracy, which is pretty darn good. But yeah, probably going to go to Brown Alert once we go to war with the Central Powers. What power cloth mill? Okay, keep... Keep on the economy spending. You never, ever, ever run out. Well, you you can run out of economy spending, but you really should try not to. You need to spend. You need to spend a lot of cash in order to keep these territories as profitable as possible, because they're going to have a mighty war machine to support. Carolinas are all done. Savoy. There we go. Everywhere needs to be fairly capable of producing units because of the, the unlikely event that we get um, we get some amphibious landings. So we've got no roads to upgrade. Obviously in Europe, everywhere might not be Upgraded with metal roads, but let's just make sure that most, as many as we can, are upgraded. I mean, we've done the Americas, so let's not worry there. So let's go over to the American armies. Because you are two turns off military governor's barracks. New York is still building. Waiting for orders. Okay, Eugene Denman. That's way too many infantry you require infant uh, artillery so let's get you four units of artillery that might be enough but let's take the 16th regiment out and try and recruit some cuirassier some heavy cavalry get them into the mix you could probably do with is the von losberg so let's get rid of that demi cannon. Let's take out two or three of these infantry regiments. Because you also need the support of artillery. Cavalry not so much because you've got two units of pikes. That would be nice and different. You've got one unit of cavalry. So let's take... To be honest, we may as well clear out all these militia. Let's take the 16th Light Dragoon down to Annapolis. You're going on down to Williamsburg. You're going to Annapolis. So you're not so bad with... Well, Yeomanry isn't great. Let's get rid of the Yeomanry. Stand outside of Williamsburg because you can at least draw upon a Curassier unit. It'll take some time because it's all coming out of I thought it'd be Quebec. It's all coming out of Boston. Quebec still gets some Grenadiers. You've also got another unit of Rogers Rangers. But we do have another army to build as well. And before you build... Actually, no, we can still build Marines after building the Naval Board. Yeah, we've still got some work to do here. 
But the next port that grows on this coast, I'd like to try and... Well, I do have this dried arc. Three turns till it's upgraded, so let's get a brace of second rate built. Let's do some more island upgrades. Well, upgrades to my Caribbean holdings. To improve our economic output. Let's do some a flat upgrade across Caracas. Okay, good. So you're already... Well, if we have to hit... Well, I want to wait a bit, actually, to get my... Um, I've got a, a rake. I want to get some, some more eyes on what their territory is like. So I might actually send that rake over to Stockholm rather than Copenhagen. Because we know Copenhagen's quite vulnerable. They've got ports that can be easily sailed into. At least for now. The, the Marathas are the Marathas. They they can keep until we begin our invasion. Denmark would be used to hold because it would then give us... Well, we could dominate the Baltic. I do need to push against the Barbary stage. I just, I just do, but I, I really don't like doing it because it's so boring. New town emerges. Rally in the Carolinas. There we go. So let's keep as as we were on the quite hot on the building front. Let's just check. Global Trading Company. Yeah, they're an expensive measure, but they are good. So I'm going to do it through the list so I don't miss stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. Go back, keep upgrading. Tunis, keep upgrading. More tobacco. Tainted farms in Scranton, PA. Wish they had a lumber mill. I go, yes, it's Dunder Mifflin. Okay, so you guys, let's get rid of that unit of demi cannons as well. Because you're going to get a cavalry unit. Still probably too much infantry. I want to get you a cavalry unit and then get you two 12 pounders. In terms of fleets arriving, yeah, these are our fifths coming out here to secure the trade zones. Or to better secure the trade zones. Let's get these two weak ships together. But no one to no one to um raid here. You know, both those fleets are fifth rates. Recruitment for the army in England is still on the go. So let's get two early marines, two guards recruited. Oh no, sorry. I'm a dummy. Don't get too mad because we are building um, troops in Eng um, up here in Scotland for the army in London. Let's bring you guys down. You guys march across. Yeah, you're also waiting on... Well, it's units being recruited out of Ireland. So you're going to take a bit of time. Where's my agent? Just go straight across. Straight across and have a look at Stockholm. Because, yeah, none of their ports are secured. So we can march on Copenhagen within a day. All right, all, all, okay. Oh, that's the minister I forgot to boot out last time in the Americas. Boop. There we go. Rufus Hastings. Wait a minute. My God. Okay, so you're still building. 
you're in pretty good shape. Although, and you've got a reasonable cavalry component as well. Although you do have the pikes. And you're also going to have a pretty good cavalry contingent. Because I think we've got... Yeah, they're on the march to Eugene Denman. So, right, let's make sure everyone's... Okay, yeah, you're going down to join Roland Nordell. Your Majesty. Ready for orders. Who do I send? Do I just send you? But then again, Native American mercenaries aren't... Uh, actually, they are... They have higher melee attack and... Better charge bonus, but their defense. Yeah, the defense is a bit better. Okay, so maybe you will do. I mean, they're only going to be on the defensive anyway. They're not going to be doing too many offensives. Their job is going to be to just siege them, withstand, withstand the sallies out, and then they will. Then they'll, then they'll take the city. Yeah, we're still waiting on building in these territories to get our cool American units. But I'm tempted to begin the war on Russia. Because I want to see if they will be joined by Denmark. And I want to see if the Prussians join us. So Denmark didn't join didn't join the Ottomans, the Russians. They broke their alliance. So you men can siege Komi. You men can attack Kazan. Which was about to be attacked by the... <laughs> They're in the process of getting worked over by the Ottomans anyway. So at least if we take these territories, that's... That's something at least. I mean, they're not worth anything. Well, Kazan's another thousand. A thousand that goes to us and not the Ottomans, I, I suppose. Okay, sorry, I've just been... Some gold hammers have just caught my eye. Obviously, that's another army. That can march out to cover an axis of advance. And is Moscow... Moscow actually... Yeah, they're becoming pretty good. They don't know, but there's no religious unrest. So we're going to start north to south. We're going to take Edward, Edward Braddock and go and destroy... The garrison here at Usk Sisolsk. Komi. We're going to attack Komi. Yeah, this is not a very wealthy territory, but once it has been conquered and brought into the British sphere of influence, then then we will have a uh, we will have a booming region with the light of. Protestant reason rather than the perverted orthodox science. So, so, so. Let's get my... Deploy my howitzers off to the flank. So let's have a look at our Swiss guards. You don't often see this particular unit. So it looks like Swiss infantry with the twists. They've got the blue facings. They've all got snazzy moustaches and powdered white hair. I mean, they look, they do look pretty good, actually, I think. And obviously being foot guard units, they are, well, let's compare the 25th and the 159th. So they have an experienced chevron, so that makes it that much more acute, but much better accuracy, much faster at reloading, they carry more ammunition, and they're better in every possible way from a melee perspective. It's not a bad, not a bad unit to have in your army. Certainly not. You don't complain that the Swiss Guards are there. Then my heavy cavalry push up on the flanks. The general is going to follow up in the centre. The enemy is... Even though we are not... We're not, a, we're not a, at full strength. The enemy is... Is going to experience significant problems. So let's get my howitzers to attack... So yeah, 
Those mercenaries, they're, they're done. The artillery is done. <laughs> They've abandoned their guns. But the bulk of their forces are actually not at full strength. So even this unit, which is a the Petuski Regiment of Foot, are actually... They're a good infantry unit, but you can tell they're with, they're at you know nearly half strength. So don't worry about it. Okay, let's take these four units as core. Don't want my nice elite cavalry getting hit by cheap shots. Cheap shots from the Biolock Arm citizenry. Ooh, Quick Climb's going to hit the second regiment as well. Yeah, that's not going to go well. They lost 120 men in a single attack, and and they are done. That's right. Draw them in. My heavy cavalry would like to meet you. When the time is right, we're going to garrison the town hall. Well, the time might actually be right now. If I can get my heavy cavalry in to hit the 15th regiment. You men secure there. You guys go inside. You guys, heavy cavalry, run in. It's not the 107th. They're going to start bringing these men into their firing points or firing positions. It's not... Actually, you guys can attack there. Heavy cavalry attack the Eastern European mercenaries. Ooh, they're going to sit. They might get a volley from the 15th regiment. No, nope, they're firing upon our regular infantry as well. That's the 11th regiment secured. The 11th regiment eliminated. No, my let my heavy cavalry got hit. No, charge on into the European mercenaries. Bring them into the fight. So now we've taken the town hall. You men advance. You men secure that flank. You men advance into the town hall itself. Cavalry can hit the 15th regiment or how it's a ceasefire. And they're not attacking anyone worth shooting, really. And the heavy cavalry might get picked apart a bit here, but... There you go, you men charge on into the 12th regiment. Don't let them... Don't let them ease up. Give them nowhere to run. They're a raw front of Russian unit anyway. They're down to 12 men. So continue to harass them. There we go. You men all advance to engage the firelock arm citizenry. You guys can, can continue to chase down and destroy them. There's not really much of a need for anyone else to get involved. Let's attack ground in front of the firelock arm citizenry to fire off one volley of quick climb and cause the line to break because they won't like that at all shells coming in that's ceasefire yeah, there they go as well Let's charge our infantry in 
So yeah, the mercenaries, especially these elite mercenaries, they have actually managed to hold us down to pin our um, elite infantry down. The Don Cossacks cavalry isn't going to be what did it. Charge the light horse because only one cavalryman. So if we kill him, the game is over. See, he's confident. He's winning decisively and he's dead. There we go. Comey secured. I was going to say, that means there must be a hidden unit somewhere. Being up, getting up to no good. But there we go. Comey secured. Just leave it as a governor's barracks for now. Let's do some replenishing. Upgrade the roads to promote forward movement. Because can you guys actually leave Comey immediately? You can, which is excellent, because you can then advance to Ufa. Then we're going to take Alvin Veer, we're going to attack Kazan, and this is the current Russian capital. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the destruction of the Russian garrison of Kazan. Cheers everyone.